Hi guys! It has never been a better time to start looking for a new job in Canada. Just last month, Statistics Canada released their job vacancies report for the fourth quarter of 2021. There are almost 1 million jobs currently unfilled in Canada, and I'm willing to bet that that number has only gotten bigger in Q1 2022. According to the report, these jobs span across all sectors, although restoration, hospitality, retail and customer-facing jobs definitely top the list. So if you're thinking about working in Canada, this video will provide you with insight into the Canadian work culture so that you can get all of those money and promotions in the world. And to do that, we have summoned some help. Our fabulous friend Yulia from This Is Yulia will help us discuss the Canadian work culture. And once you're done watching this video, make sure to head over to Yulia's channel to learn everything you need to know about salary, benefits, and quitting your job. Now, let's get to the work culture in Canada. Are you ready for this, Yulia? Of course I am. Let's go. Let's start with some basic social rules. The overall work environment in Canada is very nice and friendly. People respect each other. They don't yell at each other. Everything is done in a very polite manner. You're not supposed to be rude or vulgar at your workplace. If you have some dirty jokes, please leave them for your friend Mario. Mario will like those jokes. But if you're trying to blend in and like, you know, get to know better your coworkers, Please don't be rude, my friend. A very important thing is to understand the work and life balance. Things can happen and some people might need to take days, hours off. You need to be respectful of that and you shouldn't be bothering people saying, hey, I have a deadline, blah, 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 when the person's kid is sick. I think it got more and more important and visible after COVID because a lot of people had to be flexible, take some hours off, babysit their kids, take them to doctors and whatsoever. So please respect your co-workers' personal space. If they can't do the work today, well, you'll have to work till tomorrow. Harassment is strictly prohibited. I know in some countries it's okay to cat call women, to, you know, talk about their like appearances, whatsoever, make some comments. Well, in Canada, you're gonna be reported to HR, you can be fired. Harassment is not okay. If someone said you no, that means no. No love affairs and other, you know, stuff at the workplace. Work is work. Personal life is personal life. Be nice and respectful to each other. Canadians like to be nice to everyone, so political correctness is a big thing here. It's part of the Canadian social contract to be nice to you so that you're also nice to them in return. With that, they will rarely tell you what they really think about potentially sensitive matters. Even if there's a conflict that arises or there is something that a Canadian doesn't like, they will be very much on the surface and generally positive giving their feedback. If there's some constructive feedback that uh, they want to share, they will give you a compliment to make you feel good at first. Then they will share some constructive feedback with you. But because Canadian like to be nice and friendly, they will also finish it up with another compliment. They call this tactic the shit sandwich. The bun is the compliments and the meat is the constructive feedback. And they will feed that to you. That way you will walk away feeling good about yourself while still having received feedback on what you could improve on. And even though the general environment is friendly and respectful, the love for gossip exists in every single culture on earth. Be careful speaking negatively of your colleagues and better said, don't ever speak negatively of anyone behind their back. Small talk is a social norm that is super popular in Canada and you are expected to small talk. I'm sorry if you don't want to. Well, you live in Canada now. You must. Small talk is basically a short, polite conversation about anything. How's the weather? How's your weekend? How's your wife doing? What's new on Netflix? So basically just an icebreaker between you and your coworker. For example, if it's Monday and you're kind of trying to work, but a person can come to your desk and be like, how was your weekend? How is your cat doing? That's the small talk. It's basically a conversation about nothing. And it's normally, I don't know, five, 10 minutes maximum. I think it's really important to build relationships, especially at work, if you don't know people. A few tips on a small talk. Be polite, but also be interested in other person. It's not like, hey, Yulia, how was the weekend? Great. 
No, the conversation should be, hey, Yulia, how was your weekend? Oh, it was amazing. How was yours? You should ask the person, how was their weekend? Or how was their cat, dog, or whoever. Choose general and positive topics like weather, like pets, maybe sports, traveling, any topic that can provoke a nice conversation. And please don't talk a lot about yourself. Just don't overshare and have this balance between asking and talking. Happy hour is a big thing in the work culture. Happy hour is the happy time between 5 to 6 or sometimes 5 to 7 p.m. when co-workers go out together to socialize after work. And this time has become so popular that it turned into a marketing machine where bars and restaurants offer discounts on drinks and food during this time to lure workers in. So even if you don't like to socialize with your colleagues, at least you'll get a deal on your dinner. Happy hour is a good time to get to know your coworkers in an informal setting, something a little bit more loose and relaxed. And you can learn what they like and care about overall, which will help you collaborate better with them. And you can even learn what your manager likes so that you can get that promotion that you want. This is also the time when you can practice your small talk skills even more. Just don't get drunk or hit on your coworkers and stay professional and polite. Let's talk about some nice gestures that you can do at your workspace. First of all, you can bring coffee and donuts to the office. At my work, we would honestly bring like croissants and like donuts if we want to celebrate something. Or we're feeling like having donuts, we would bring donuts to the office. Sometimes employers will bring Tim Hortons coffee, like the big one, but it also depends on the size of the company. Sharing useful resources, content, events with your coworkers. Every time I see something that might be helpful for, let's say, developers, I would send them the link saying, hey guys, here's how we can improve the workflow, if somebody designed a button that has a low contrast, I would say some resources, how you can check the contrast so it's accessible for people, for example, with eyesight impairments. And overall, be helpful. If somebody asks for your help, don't be like, I don't have time for that. No, just be nice and help the person out. Most likely, they will help you next time you ask. <laughs> Now that you know how to build alliances and socialize in the work environment, let's talk about how to collaborate and work in a team. Canada is a highly collaborative society. Everyone works well together, has a high level of trust in each other's skills and abilities, and ideally, everyone contributes equally to the team's outcomes. It's easy to feel good and comfortable in such environment. Such high level of teamwork condemns individualism. For the most part, Canadians aren't comfortable with someone on their team who goes in their corner, works on their own thing, and never talks to anyone. Even if that means that that person is the smartest person in the room, this person will definitely not be the most liked person in the room. In order to avoid that, we recommend to involve your teammates in the work you do. Always give credit, speak as we versus I when you work in a team. And it's okay to make mistakes, and it's okay to admit them. You will not get fired for making a sincere mistake, but your honesty will go a long way. Also, try to offer help when you can and seek advice and your teammates' opinions because everybody loves giving their opinions, so it's a good way to build a relationship with your teammates and make them feel good. Canadians don't like conflict, so please don't get involved into any conflicts at work. Keep it down low or just, you know, skip skip that part of the work. Your job is to make your boss look good. And if you work in a team, please always be vocal so other team members don't take credits for the work you've done. Like, you know, in school they like make a presentation and then Miss Yulia does the presentation and five other people like, yeah, yeah, I helped her, I helped her. Don't do that, that's not good. Recognize your colleague's effort in front of everyone. Hey, props to Alex, props to Giovanni, props to Mario, like they're the best workers, they did A, B, C, D, E, we appreciate you. Don't be shy and tell people how you feel. Be like, hey, thank you for helping me with this task, with this design decision. I really appreciate what you've done. 
Now that you are taking the first steps towards becoming an awesome teammate to work with, let's talk a little bit about how you can excel in your role and get even better. Most jobs in Canada are performance-based, which means that you get performance reviews twice or once a year. Performance reviews are meant to establish a common ground on how you're doing as a worker, what is expected of you, and what aspirations you have. You should always get a clear list of what your responsibilities are and how you measure success in your role. This will help you direct your efforts in the right direction in your job. This should also be the first thing you align on with your manager when you start your new job. Make sure you also keep track of your goals over the year and how they changed so that you can use that data when you want to get a promotion or a raise and you can tell your boss like, hey boss, look here, I've done this really cool thing that you're proud of, I deserved a promotion. Being a top performer, crushing your goals, and always completing your task will help you with performance reviews, aka with a salary rise. Always show initiative in the project. Offer your help. If you see someone struggling with something, ask them if they need any help. Maybe you'll spend five minutes and this problem will be resolved. Build relationship with your manager because your manager will help you become successful. If it wasn't for my manager, I would be still, you know, dumb dumb. But he taught me a lot and now I'm super grateful for the work we've done together. And be ready to discuss your career path, your growth path with your manager. Maybe have a plan where you see yourself in five years. Because if let's say they hire you as a designer, but you see yourself in five years being a senior designer, you can set goals, you can discuss your ambitions and then have a trajectory of growing. Overall, work environment in Canada is very positive and productive. When done right, you can expect a steady career growth every year with an increase of responsibilities and pay, of course. Generally, your manager and your co-workers mean well and are happy to help you be successful, especially if the path of how you can help them be successful is clear to them too. So the biggest part you can play in all that is take note of the tips Yuli and I shared in this video. And if you want to learn more on the subject, check out this video up top or in the links below on Yulia's channel to learn about salary, benefits and leaving your job in Canada. And as usual, consider subscribing to our channel and hit the like button if this video was helpful to you. Bye! See our other video! We will see you in the next video. Bye!